Michelle Gewertz and I am the curator of Facing Claude Cahoon and Marcel Moore. Uh, the exhibition is a historical and contemporary dialogue between Claude Cahoon and Marcel Moore, um, who were genderqueer pioneers uh, whose work are mainly from the 1920s and 30s, and five contemporary artists, uh, mainly from Canada and one from South Africa. Sure, Claude Cahoon uh, and Marcel Moore were partners in life and art. And this is a photograph of uh, Marcel Moore. It's um, one of the only vintage prints uh, in the exhibition uh, from 1927. And this is an artist book, uh, again, an original edition from 1930 um, in the collection of the Art Gallery of Ontario. And this is pretty interesting because this is uh, one of their well-known collaborations. All of the photo montages, which you're looking at here, are by uh, Marcel Moore, but the text is by Claude Cahin. And Claude Cahin uh, is known now as a photographer, um, but she was actually known as, or they were actually known as a writer uh, in their lifetime. This is work by Zanelli Mahali, uh, a photographer from South Africa, and these are three works from uh, an ongoing series called Hail the Dark Lioness. And I'll talk a little bit about this image because I really like it. Um, but this is essentially all of them are Zanelli photographing themselves, and uh, you probably can't tell, but um, they have actually darkened their skin um, with makeup um, because uh, there's a quote um, that, you know, their skin color is not something that they can just wash off. They are black 365 days of the year. And this series is actually uh, 365 photos. Um, and so there are a number of signifiers here. So um, these are actually steel wool uh, pads or scrubbing pads to re reference the history of uh, black people, specifically women, um, who, uh, who work as domestic servants, really. Um, and so a lot of these photos, uh, they're meant to kind of look like very seductive fashion illustrations, but they reference um, some pretty heavy and important histories when it comes to the intersections of race uh, and gender, and in this case, class. Sure, this is a piece by Cara Tierney, and uh, they are a performance artist and uh, also an activist and uh, trans. Uh, and uh, they were really interested in actually engaging when I mentioned that Claude Canha was primarily a writer in their lifetime. Um, they were interested in engaging with the text, which is also on display in this exhibition. Uh, it's called Ave Non Avenue, or Disavowals or Cancelled Confessions. It was translated into English about 10 years ago. Um, and so Cara read the text, which is an experimental avant-garde text, and pulled out phrases that they felt would resonate with contemporary trans experience, and this is one of them. So we demand dreams, claws out, or velvet paws. Nice little cat reference for you. Sure, well we actually need to start uh, in 1929 with Claude Cahin, and this is a pretty iconic photograph of Claude looking away from a mirror in a check jacket. And so the next contemporary artist is August Klimperg, uh, who's based in Calgary, and August was really interested in this idea of uh, the body, um, but also really this iconic jacket um, and where it stands in, let's say, queer art history, if there was such a thing. And so this is a hand-woven textile. Uh, August wove it completely on the loom himself by hand. It's also hand-dyed. Um, it's seven and a half meters long. And then August collaborated with a fashion designer um, to basically remake the jacket. But of course, this piece is conceptual and it will never be remade, but there are patterns. Uh, so if you were to be uh, a sewer or a seamstress uh, or a, a garment maker, um, you would uh, use one of these patterns and that would be as if it's on the drafting table and cut out the, the material to remake that iconic jacket. And uh, there are three kind of measurements. I shouldn't be touching the work. <laughs> <laughs> there are three measurements.
measurements um, and the outside being uh, for August himself. Uh, August is quite tall, I think he's about 6'1 or 6'2. Uh, and the middle one um, is what we imagine uh, Claude Cahin to be their size, um, which is probably around my size or a little smaller, and I'm 5'4". So if you were to remake the jacket um, and the colors, of course, from a black and white photography, there, a photograph, there was um, some research that the artist did um, to speculate that perhaps in life that jacket would have been different shades of blue. Sure, well, behind me, actually behind the wall, this is a historical photograph of uh, either Claude Cahin or Marcel Moore. You can't really tell who it is because they are behind a mask. And masks are a strategy or a theme that shows up often in the work of Claude Cahin and Marcel Moore. And uh, a, a contemporary artist based in Jojage or Montreal, Dana Danger, who really likes to push boundaries um, because their work deals with some pretty mature content. But let's talk about it. So behind me, uh, we've got three photographs uh, of Dana, who's in the middle, um, and Adrian, who's another artist uh, and pole dancer on the right, and Candace, who's a midwife, uh, on the left. And Dana has beaded masks for um, her, uh, they're not subjects in the photo, that's how you would normally talk about it in art history, but she really sees them as kin and as collaborators. Um, and so uh, Dana began beating fetish masks uh, several years ago um, and had help with uh, elders um, and also spent time beating these at women's shelters in Montreal. So if you come with me, you can actually see, this is Dana's mask in the middle. And if you look at it really close, this is the first mask or the first time that Dana, I believe, ever beaded anything. Um, and you can actually see the progression and how they got better. Um, but there were elders who were working uh, with them. And so there were conversations that were had around uh, fetish masks and the communities that, that actually get created um, it within BDSM uh, spaces. Um, and part of Dana's work is actually to bring awareness to the fact that whether it's BDSM spaces or not, people who inhabit black and indigenous bodies are often expected to play certain roles. And this in a way is a refusal to do that. Uh, yeah, that black bodies uh, are perhaps expected uh, to perform in certain ways and, and those individuals may not want to perform those roles. Um, and so you'll also see that in the photographs, Dana um, has refused uh, a sort of salacious gaze. Um, the gazes aren't really confrontational, but they are there holding space uh, and proudly doing so. But you don't see any markers of sex or gender. They're photographed from here up. Um, and it really, the, the whole body of work is really about kind of kinship and community and safety uh, in those spaces. And so for people to be able to be in any space in whatever body they inhabit um, and feel comfortable and safe, uh, which is not always possible in, uh, unfortunately, in the world that we live in. This uh, is a timeline to introduce visitors to Claude Cahoon and Marcel Moore because while they're very well known to me and the artists in the show and uh, genderqueer art history buffs, they're not exactly household names. So these little icons, we decided to pull fun design elements out. Uh, they are by Marcel Moore, who is a graphic artist and illustrator. Uh, and really the visual artist of the duo, which is ironic because Claude Cahoon is really recognized as a visual artist and not the writer. This is the front page of the book that's elsewhere in the gallery. Um, but these little icons kind of punctuate the text all throughout the book. So we pull them out and they illustrate our timeline. And this is a very early illustration by Marcel Moore of Claude Cahoon before they were Claude Cahoon. This is work by Laura Toller. It's a film installation and it's actually uh, Laura performing um, in front of a piece of equipment that was used in early 
20th century trick photography in commercial studios. It's called a photo multigraph. And so when you see the film, you are going to see not one Laura, but five Lauras. Text collaged together by Claude Cahoon and Maya Darren. So historical texts uh, in, in, that Laura wove into a sort of script. And that's what you'll see in the film. And look out for the cameo by Stanley the Cat. Come on. Here we go.